In a strong and new display of support, British Foreign Minister Boris Johnson is calling out the UN for the international body's anti-Israel bias. Johnson described the UNHRC's criticism of Israeli airstrikes against Hezbollah profound absurdity, and he didn't stop there. He went on to say that until the UN Human Rights Council drops its anti-Israel bias, the UK will vote down all resolutions regarding Israeli actions in the Golan Heights, West Bank and Gaza Strip. Last week, the UN adopted a resolution condemning alleged Israeli human rights abuses in the Golan Heights. But the same council made no mention of the bloody Syrian civil war next door that's killed over 470,000 people and has left millions homeless. Johnson went on to say that while he supports the two-state solution, he opposes boycotting Israeli goods made in the West Bank and the Golan Heights. Two days ago at APAC's annual policy conference, U.S. envoy to the U.N. Nikki Haley was also heavily critical of the alleged U.N. bias. She stated that you're not going to take our number one Democratic friend in the Middle East and beat up on them. After listening to a barrage of accusations leveled against the Jewish state at the U.N. earlier last week, Hillel Nour, the head of the U.N. watchdog group U.N. Watch, delivered an impassioned speech directly calling out the UNHRC's hypocrisy. United Nations Watch, how do you Mr. President, let me begin by putting the following on the record. Everything we just heard from the world's worst abusers of human rights, of women's rights, of freedom of religion, of the press, of assembly, of speech, is absolutely false and indeed Orwellian. Today's report does not consider Israelis to be deserving of human rights, consistent with the approach of this council, where today's notorious agenda item against Israel completely ignores their human rights. Now, over the weekend, President Abbas announced he was giving his highest medal to Rima Khalaf, who resigned from the Economic Commission of Western Asia, a Beirut-based UN agency of 18 Arab states, after Secretary General Guterres rightly instructed her to remove an absurd report which accused Israel of, quote, apartheid. Mr. President, why is Mr. Abbas celebrating a report written by the notorious Richard Falk after his own Palestinian mission here? tried in 2010 to remove Mr. Falk on the basis that he was, quote, a partisan of Hamas, as we know from WikiLeaks. The accusation against Israel is absurd. Israel's 1.5 million Arabs. Now, the previous speaker can continue. Thank you, Mr. President. Israel's 1.5 million Arabs, whatever challenges they face, enjoy full rights to vote and to be elected in the Knesset. They work as doctors and lawyers. They serve on the Supreme Court. Now, I'd like to ask the members of that commission that commissioned that report, the Arab states from which we just heard, Egypt, Iraq, and the others, how many Jews live in your countries? How many Jews lived in Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Libya, Morocco? Once upon a time, the Middle East was full of Jews. Algeria had 140,000 Jews. Algeria, where are your Jews? Egypt used to have 75,000 Jews. Where are your Jews? Syria, you had tens of thousands of Jews. Where are your Jews? Iraq, you had over 135,000 Jews. Where are your Jews? Mr. President, where is the real apartheid? Why is there a UN commission on the Middle East that does not include Israel? From the 1960s and the 70s, they refused to include Israel. Where is the apartheid, Mr. President? Mr. President, why are we meeting today on an agenda item singling out only one state, the Jewish state, for targeting? Where is the apartheid?